house where Ruth, you have performed a live session for us. You've got quite a good connection with this place, haven't you? I do indeed. Yes, I've had uh, I've had things to do with the folk house since I lived in Bristol, actually. Um, either working in the in the cafe when I was very small, or I've done quite a few quite a few gigs here, quite a few performances, um, and run some singing workshops and all sorts all sorts of things. So you've been, you're in your 20s now, so you've been making music in Bristol for quite a while if you've been here since you were really young then. Mm, yeah, yeah, I, I was here, uh, I moved here when I was 17 um, and literally have been gigging since I, I lived here. Um, I was doing a lot more uh, folk when I was younger, sort of acoustic guitar sort of thing. Um, and so I did quite a lot of shows here because they love that sort of stuff. And, um, and then as I've got older, I just I'm so fond of it that I put on some, some quite big shows of my my own band. So yeah, it's really good. It's nice. So your music's changed a little bit since you were younger. I guess you you make soul kind of R and B style stuff now. Yeah, absolutely. It's I mean it's developed. I think as as most artists do. Um, I've always predominantly been a songwriter, and that's the main thing that I would call myself. Um, but as I've developed and listened to music and and progressed, I think. I've just been really drawn into that sort of R&B soul sound and just the way that the melodies sit together and the, the vocals and just everything. It just, yeah, that's where I've wanted to be and I think that's that's naturally kind of happened. Who is it that's inspired you to make that kind of music? Oh, that's a question. <laughs> um, I guess uh, when I was younger, it was artists like Corinne Bailey Ray, um, Carol King, that sort of thing. And then as I got older, I sort of started listening to more um, thing with yeah, Erica Badu and um, even even uh, sort of Massive Attack and the sort of the, the production side of, of that as well. So there's yeah, there's a lot of artists that that have um, that have I think inspired me. Have you seen the music scene change in Bristol since you've been here? Because it must have changed a little bit, right? Yeah, I, I mean I think for me it feels just so fiercely independent. It's that's just what you get here and it's brilliant and uh, it's it makes it possible for artists to to one do it for a living and to do it the way that they want to do it um, and I just think that's beautiful I think I think that's that's really it's just got really strong so you're not going to run off to London anytime soon no I had a short stint in London and came back actually <laughs> yeah um, yeah I think it's brilliant it's it's just it's a it's a lovely hub for music but you're, you're a full-time musician, right? Have you been a full-time musician for quite a while, since you were younger? Um, no, I mean, I've, I've, well, I've worked in, in cafe jobs and all sorts. Um, I'm sure we all have. Um, I did quite a lot of events for a while, but, but then uh, I, think, I think I've been doing it full-time for about uh, two or three years. Um, I do quite a lot of coaching, sort of vocal coaching for people in studios as well, which is, which is great. Um, uh, but yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's doable in Bristol. How? How did you kind of make that step? Because I think there are a lot of people who would like to do that, but they don't <laughs> want to take that risk. Yeah, um, well, uh, yeah, giving up sleep, that's the first step. Um, just, I think, as long as you're prepared to work really hard and prepared to do a lot of different things, it's possible. I think if you're expecting to um, live solely off original music, it's really hard work. Um, and it's it's a lot harder to to survive uh, but if you're prepared to do i guess a bit of teaching a little bit of um sort of going in things like going into colleges and talking about what you do that's that's great because it helps other people it helps students who are who are looking to do the same thing um uh yeah singing i do a lot of session work so i do a lot of session singing um for either bands or recordings or adverts things like that um and I also do a lot of uh, top line writing and writing for other artists, writing for television, that sort of thing. So I think if you're if you're realistic and and prepared to look at all the different elements that there are in music, then it's it's totally doable and fun. So you need to be diverse, really. You can't expect just to be performing gigs every night and making money. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you you can perform gigs every night, um, but I just think as long as you're aware that it's not always going to be your own music. Um, but it's definitely, it's definitely doable. I, I, I love it. <laughs> 
Now, you run something called Bristol Sessions, which um, has been going for a little while now, hasn't it? So tell us about that. Um, so Bristol Sessions um, is, is a hub for um, musicians and performers to come and network and perform and play with each other. Um, it's set, it was set up as a jam night, but we're trying to get a bit more organised next year. Um, and we're, we're kind of running it more as a showcase now. Um, but it's, I mean, it's based around soul music because that's what I love. Um, at my band are the, uh, are the house band, but we do invite different players in to, to perform. Um, it, guest singers get up all night and, and sing with the house band, and it's great fun. It's really good. It's kind of it feels kind of like a musician's night off, and so everyone just kind of comes out, hangs out, sort of chats, and then different people get on the stage. We had at the last one we had um, three part horn section turn up who I didn't know were going to be there. And someone was, was singing James Brown and they just sort of walked through the audience and sort of got on stage. And it was just, it's amazing because you never know what's going to happen. Um, it's, yeah, it's good. It's good fun. And who perform, who comes to these events? Anyone, really. Um, we get a lot of singers down. Um, it's nice because singers don't often perform with each other because we're all on different gigs. So it's it's nice sort of chance for everyone to hang out. Um, just musicians in Bristol there's loads of them if you if you do a little bit of digging there's just hundreds <laughs> do you find that people come do non-musicians come and watch as well or do you just get musicians coming to watch other musicians absolutely um yeah people do come to watch it it's a good show I think with the house band and getting pro players up to sort of guess with the house band it's a very good show and people we've got quite a strong sort of loyal lot that come down and, and just love it um, and we're, we're starting to get involved now with um, some local uh, labels um, who are sort of wanting to get involved and so showcasing some of their artists and A&R is starting to come down and, and just I don't know do a bit sniffing around and see what we've got going on it's, yeah it's good <laughs> and where does this happen if anyone wants to come along at Hems at the Golden Lion um, at the moment it's the first and third Wednesday but we're going to be changing it to um, once a month on a Thursday from January um, so keep an eye out keep an eye out for that I just want to focus on the session for a second because um, we asked you to do something a little bit different quite stripped back just you and your your pianist and you're it was amazing watching you do it because um, you were kind of learning as you <laughs> went a little bit during the session <laughs> No, 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 but it, it was really, it was really great because you, you wrote the piano, but then you gave it to your, to penis to put together for you and somehow it just worked really well. Yeah, I mean, he's incredible. That's why it worked so well. <laughs> yeah, I had Paul Quinn um, playing keys for me, um, who I've worked with now four years um, on and off just sort of as I've grown and it's, it's lovely to perform with him. Um, so yeah, I sort of I, I write out these sort of basic chords, and I have this sound in my head that I know how I want it to sound. And um, I think he seems to speak my language because I can just go no a little bit more, kind of like just like do 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 yeah, just like yeah like that. <laughs> I have no idea what she's on about, but we'll have a go. Um, yeah, so it was that was me getting overexcited and going I want to do all my new material right now. Uh, but it worked. It sounded good. It was. I was really pleased with it. And do you feel happy performing quite stripped back with literally just you and a keyboard? Yeah. Well, I mean, this is kind of the new direction that it's going in. And I think it's it's about leaving space for the voice and the songs. And I think I've sort of gone full circle because I started off with me and a guitar singing my songs. Um, and then... As I developed and learned more about music and learned more about what I wanted to do, I started working with different musicians and going through lots of different styles and, and experimenting. And, and and now I've sort of come back to a point where I am still a songwriter. That is what I do, and I want to I want to show that. And I I, I think it's about telling stories. It's it's about bringing somebody in and and sharing an experience. And I, I think the best way to do that is to just do it as it is. You know, and just sing <laughs> well thank you very much for talking to us you're very welcome